Hey guys, welcome back to Physics Through Computational Thinking. In this module, we'll talk about visual thinking and non-dimensionalization. We'll learn about how to translate a physics problem into a visual problem. And we'll learn about how to solve the problem visually. And then we'll also learn about how to interpret results from the visual data that we have in front of them. That'll be the objective of today's session. Let's go ahead and look at our first example. In this example, we'll consider the simple pendulum and we'll talk about how to non-dimensionalize this and visualize the simple problem of the simple pendulum. Just to quote Sidney Coleman, who said, the career of a young theoretical physicist consists of treating the harmonic oscillator in ever increasing levels of abstraction. What he means is that in our career of physics as a researcher or as a student, we keep on coming back to the problem of simple harmonic motion again and again and keep on solving it again and again in different ways in different uh, uh, context. Uh, this is how the problem of simple harmonic oscillator is so important. And even in this course, we'll come back to it uh, many, many times. So let's look at one of the simplest systems and see how it is connected to simple harmonic motion. The simple system that we are considering today is uh, the simple pendulum. So let's consider a simple pendulum over here of length L and let's say the bob has mass M and the problem we have to do is find the potential and plot it as a function of theta. So it's a very simple problem. We have to find the potential for this uh, pendulum and we have to uh, plot this as a function of theta. So we have to plot the potential of this uh, pendulum. What we're going to do is the simple problem will break it into four steps, define, translate, compute and interpret. This very simple problem will lay down those four steps for us. So pay attention on how we go about to do that. So first step is to define. The problem is we have to plot the potential, we have to find the potential. So the potential is simply given by mgl1 minus cos theta. So first we have to lay down a coordinate system. The coordinate system is we are considering this line as the line of zero potential. The angle between the vertical position of the pendulum and any arbitrary position of the pendulum we are taking that as theta that now if this is theta and this is the zero potential we have to find the height by which the bob is lifted up from this line and that height is given by this is the length l minus the projection of this l onto this which is l cos theta so l minus l cos theta therefore my potential becomes mgl1 minus cos theta now that we have got this potential I want to plot it but one of the hurdles that I get in plotting is what do I do for MGL? Should I take some values for the mass m, put in the value of g equal to 9.8 meter per second square and take some length? How should I go about um, uh, plotting this potential? How should we deal with MGL? What we are going to do with that is we will we'll, we'll non-dimensionalize this problem. That is we will translate this physics problem into a math problem by removing all the dimensions that are coming from physics, we'll take them out and turn it into a simple mathematical equation or mathematical problem. We will analyze that and we'll plot that. So this is the second step of translate. We want to bring this physical potential into an abstract mathematical form. To do that, we'll non-dimensionalize. So in this problem, the angle theta is already dimensionless. It's measured in radians, which is a dimensionless unit. The potential, however, has units of energy, which is measured in units of MGL. And that is why the potential is mgl1 minus cos theta. So in order to uh, non-dimensionalize, we'll define a new potential v of theta, which is equal to v of theta divided by mgl. And we will, when, when we divide by mgl, we get v of this curly v of theta equal to 1 minus cosine theta. This is now a non-dimensionless potential and we can actually go ahead and plot it. So let's go ahead and just plot it. You've done this before and that brings us to the step of computation or visualization. So this is the third, third stage of the problem. We, this is where we compute. So my computation here is I'm going to make a plot using the plot function. You've seen this before. You've done this before. And the plot is just the plot of 1 minus cosine theta in the limits of minus pi to pi. Let's go back to this problem here. Theta equal to 0 means vertical position. Theta equal to minus pi by 2 means horizontal position with the bob being over here theta equal to plus pi by 2 means bob being over here theta equals to pi means bob being vertically upwards 
So we are plotting all the way from theta equal to minus pi to plus pi. So here's my plot. Now let's go ahead and make this plot a lo li little bit uh, more prettier by adding uh, various labels etc. And to do that, I will execute this command over here. When I do that, I get the plot below. Now leave it as a homework exercise to figure out um, what are all these various options I have added. A little bit of tinkering with this one, one line of code, you'll be able to understand uh, some of the options that I've used here that you've not seen before. So when I make use of, uh, when I plot it this way, my picture gets labeled, it starts looking prettier, and now I can use it to understand and analyze my results. So here's my solid line. Solid line corresponds to one minus cosine of theta. I'm gonna approximate that with a quadratic potential. The quadratic potential is one half theta square. So if you approximate cosine theta as one minus theta square by two for small angles, one minus cosine theta becomes theta square by two. And that is my dashed line. So dashed line is the quadratic potential that corresponds to theta square by two. And you see that it matches very well for the small angle, which is where this expansion is supposed to hold. And I've also plotted a dotted line in this picture, which is the uh, line corresponding to V of theta equal to one. This is just for reference. Now, we, we do notice here that the potential very well agrees with the quadratic potential over here. And that is why for a simple pendulum, we often make an assumption that the angles are small and we, uh, we treat a simple pendulum as a simple harmonic oscillator. Simple pendulum is not really a single, simple harmonic oscillator because potential is not theta square by two, but cosine theta. For small angles, it behaves like a simple harmonic oscillator. And which is what we use when we allow the pendulum to oscillate, measure its time period and use the time period to obtain the gravitation constant by using time period or omega equal to square root g by l. Now let's come to the interpret stage and for interpret stage I've got three questions for you. We'll, we'll look at these three questions and we'll analyze or we'll find the answer of these three questions using, using this visual, visual data or this visual representation that we have created. So the fourth stage of interpret, my first question to use, what does V theta equal to one represent? What physical value of the potential does it correspond to and what is the angle of maximum deflection theta max for v equal to 1. So first question is what is v of theta equal to 1, what is its physical value and what value of potential does this correspond to. Second question is by eyeballing the picture above, estimate the maximum energy of the pendulum for which it may still qualify for simple harmonic oscillator. So we do agree that for a small angle this is a simple harmonic oscillator, it behaves like a simple harmonic oscillator. but for about what angles does it work? How far it can go? Is it theta equal to 30 degrees, 60 degrees, 90 degrees? For how big a theta should be that I can believe the the behavior of the, pen, of the simple pendulum is going to be like a simple harmonic oscillator. And, and I want you to do this just by eyeballing the picture. So this is where we want to look at the visual data, visual representation and interpret how well a system is approximated by the approximation we are making here, which is the small angle approximation. Third question is by eyeballing the picture above, estimate the maximum deflection angle theta max for which the pendulum may still qualify for a simple harmonic oscillator. Oh, I'm sorry. Uh, the second question was find estimate the maximum energy of the pendulum for which it may still qualify for simple harmonic oscillator. And the third question is find the maximum angle theta max for which the pendulum may still qualify for simple harmonic oscillator. So if you want to pause the video at this moment, you can go ahead and pause the video, think about these questions and when you play back, I will discuss the answers with you. All right, let's go to the answer of the first question. What does V theta equal to 1 represent? V theta equal to 1 is this horizontal dotted line. It corresponds to energy of the system or energy of the simple pendulum. As the pendulum oscillates, its angle theta changes, as the angle theta changes, its potential energy changes according to this solid curve. And its kinetic energy changes according to the difference between this dotted line and the solid curve. Which means 
the difference between the dotted line and the solid curves that is the height above the solid curve up to this dotted line this is the measure of the kinetic energy that difference is the measure of the kinetic energy so this represents the total energy of my system and how much energy is that that corresponds to because v is 1 and v is measured in units of mgl this is how we non-dimensionalized v v theta equal to 1 corresponds to v theta equal to mgl or energy equal to mgl so this dotted line corresponds to my system having an energy of mgl that means kinetic energy plus potential energy is equal to mgl the potential energy is represented by the solid curve the difference between the dotted line and the solid curve is the kinetic energy so when when i start from here my kinetic energy slowly increases angle decreases at this point my kinetic energy becomes maximum potential becomes minimum and again the kinetic energy starts to decrease and at this point it becomes zero and this is the turning point for the pendulum the pendulum turns turns back and go, starts going in that direction so pendulum oscillates between these two values of the angle theta from so this is my theta max for v theta v equal to one it oscillates between these two points as it oscillates between these two points energy energy increases reaches a maximum energy decreases and it comes to a stop it turns changes its direction energy increases back again and so on and so forth so what is theta max for v theta equal to 1 well it's an intersection point so you can go ahead and uh, solve for that you have to substitute 1 minus co cosine theta equal to 1 which which leaves cosine theta equal to 0 and that gives you theta equal to pi by 2. That's for the first question. Now, in the second question, I want you to eyeball the picture and estimate the maximum energy of the pendulum for which it can still qualify for a simple harmonic oscillator. Clearly, the dotted line over here, which is corresponds to V theta equal to 1 or energy equal to MGL, you see the dashed potential and the solid potential don't agree with each other. That means this is where it's definitely, the approximation is definitely failing. If it has to be considered as a simple harmonic oscillator, I should come down over here, down to this point. Around this region, my system can qualify as, up to this region, my system can qualify as a simple harmonic oscillator. So the value over here may be even to be on the safer side uh, somewhere around here. So maybe at uh, theta equal to 0.8. So by eyeballing, I can at least say that at theta equal to 0.8 and the corresponding energy equal to 0.4, my system can qualify as a simple harmonic oscillator. This is just by eyeballing, so these numbers are approximate. But let's go ahead and check out if this approximation is valid for small angles. So to do that, what I will do is I'll evaluate cosine of, let's estimate what is um, 0.8 correspond to. So if pi by 2 is about uh, um, 3.14 by 2, that is 1.5, this is about half of that, so this is pi by 4. So our estimate is that at theta equal to pi by 4, I can still treat the system as a simple harmonic oscillator. So let's, let me go ahead and put uh, pi by 4 as a cosine pi by 4 and let me evaluate its value. It's 0 0.707 and our estimation is for this cosine theta is 1 minus theta squared by 2. So I'll go ahead and uh, check what is 1 minus theta squared by 2. So in this case, theta is pi by 4 and I want to square it up multiply by half and evaluate it that's 0.69 it's very close to 0.707 so our estimation from eyeballing was uh, correct that uh, for theta equal to pi by 4 the system will still can be approximated as uh, a simple harmonic oscillator and that is the reason why when you do an experiment with a simple pendulum, even with wide angles, angles as much as 30 degrees, 40 degrees, you can get acceleration due to gravity pretty accurately. If you've never done this experiment before, go ahead and take a pendulum, create, make a pendulum out of some objects that you can find in your office or home, oscillate the pendulum, count the time period for 10 oscillations, divide by 10, do this, repeat this many times, take an average of many of these values, that is your one time period using the time period 
calculate what is the acceleration due to gravity. And you'll find that you'll get a pretty accurate number very close to 9.8. All right, so well, let me quickly recap what we did in this example. In this example, we understood how to non-dimensionalize non a physics problem, bring into an abstract mathematical form which we can analyze on a computer or solve or plot on a computer. So first we defined our problem, then we translated it into a mathematical abstract form, then we went to the computation stage where we plotted it on a computer for visualization. We made our plot look prettier, added a few more lines, and then we used that to, in, to do an interpretation 